right, we have the FPC versus the Scorpion 3 Plus Carbine. Today I'm going to tell you all the differences between these two, the battery of arms, I'm going to take you to the range with me, and just tell you at the end which one I like the best and why. These PCCs, as, as far as these two, are priced fairly well. Uh, PCCs tend to be pretty expensive, just like rifles are. Um, and uh, so if you're looking at one of these and you're like, man, I don't know which one to go with, hopefully this video will help you. And if it does, consider subscribing if you like what we do here. Let's go ahead and get started. I want to talk about the features that make each one of these unique because that is one thing neither of these guns lack in, and that's uniqueness. Okay, now the FPC is new from Smith & Wesson, new in the 2023 year anyways. So we have a 16 and a quarter inch barrel. We're right at five pounds naked, and we have a half by 28 thread up here with the thread protector. We have the M-Lock design handrail, and this is really awesome. I love M-Lock because you can attach what you want, but you can also leave it as sleek as possible. One thing nice about this one too, it's so small in diameter that we could do a thumb over bore if that's the way you like to hold your rifles. Rocking the Holosun HE510C. This is the green dot. This is one of my favorite Holosuns they've ever put out here. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that it is a green dot. I'm a fan of green over red. I just, it, it, it's a little bit more expensive, but trust me, it uh, for my eyes anyways, it picks up really well. Now, when you come to the back, what's interesting about this gun is it pretty much functions like a pistol. And, you know, most of your PCCs, they're either going to function like an AR, they might function like a pistol, they might function like the Scorpion, which is way different than the FPC. But very few of them that I've seen actually function literally like a pistol. So, they have the M&P swappable magwells in here. You have the same tool like you have in your pistols. You literally just pull this out and we can then swap our back straps. So we can take those off. We can put whatever size we want on there. They're shipped with uh, three other ones besides the one that comes on here. I find that this one does actually just fine on this particular gun. So you have your bolt release, right? Right here, again, it works like the slide release on a pistol. They have their flat face trigger in here. We have a cross bolt style safety in front of the trigger guard. And then we have this mechanism right here. So if you've ever seen the kel Sub 2000, which is a super popular gun, they actually fold on top of itself, whereas this one folds off to the side. And so your charging handle, which is in the rear, is going to double as your lockup. And so, when this is folded, we're, you know, it's 16 and 3 eighths of an inch, somewhere uh, right in there. And so a perfect backpack survival type of gun. It folds off to the side, so our optic is unaffected. This is a really smart design because, again, we don't have to run an offset design like you do on the kel or anything like that. All of the M&P mags are interchangeable, the double stacks anyways, and it comes with 117 and 223 round mags. Pretty good. Another thing with the magazines is we actually have the ability to store our magazines in our stock. So simply by sliding them in there, and by the way, you obviously can load them, you know, fully loaded, they will still lock up in here. And then with the press of a button, we just pull them out just like that. So a pretty intuitive design and uh, really awesome. Now, one thing they decided to do is they put these little sleeves on here. Um, and these are, uh, you know, an extension basically of your grip right there. So it has like this little curve right here. So whenever you have your finger on there, it kind of gives you a full grip 
without interfering with the magazine. It's not a bad design by any means. Um, I just don't like the sleeves that actually move on the magazine. I'd rather them be solidly in place or, I mean, honestly, you could just probably take it off. Um, it might bug you a little bit that you have a kind of a gap there. I don't find that it bugs me at all though. As far as shooting, I still can get most of my hand up on that grip. I just don't know how I feel about these right here and the fact that they can just kind of slide around. It does make it a little more convenient and if you have bigger hands, you might appreciate this because it gives you a little more real estate for your hand to sit on. I just don't like the fact that it moves, but kind of is what it is there. We have our charging handle back here in the rear. When we go to the Scorpion here, as you can see, totally different in design. And one thing I want to show you is how different they really are, right? You look at these, I mean, everything about them is different. And that's why this comparison is so great because I can show you all of these differences and then that way you can make a determination which one you like the best, right? We have a 16.3 inch barrel on this one. We have a faux suppressor. It does come off half by 28 threads, right? So if you want to utilize any kind of suppressor, you can. You're not really going to be doing any kind of thumb over bore on this one specifically. Uh, even though it is a sleek design, we have M-Lock up here. It's a plastic handguard, so it's designed to keep some of that heat away from you under really, you know, rapid type of firing. And I guess we could do kind of a thumb over bore because you have this like shark nose area right here in the front. So it slims the front of it down a little bit. It kind of slants down. So yeah, I guess we could do that. I didn't really shoot it like that. I just kind of shot it, you know, with my hand just right there. Um, but overall, it's a really smart and good design. Again, I'm a huge fan of M-Lock. And we got plenty of slots all the way pretty much to the back of the receiver, you know, all the way forward and on the sides as well. Now, one thing you'll notice, as opposed to having our charging handle underneath, I, I say similar to an AR in that it just kind of pulls back to you. You can use your index and your middle finger on which hand, you know, you actually charge the gun up with. Not really an AR design, but you get the idea. Same type of action. This one actually has a side charging handle. So not only can we work it from the side, not only can we work it like an MP5, right? Where we can just push that down, slap away if you want, but you also have a bolt release that is ambidextrous forward of the trigger guard. And we could just drop it down just like that. By the way, both of them are non-reciprocating charging handles and you can reverse this charging handle to the other side on the Scorpion. Well, that thing is accurate. We have a full length rail up top, just like the FPC, but unlike the FPC, we have a set of backup sights straight from the factory. These are much improved over the old design. They actually have this little flywheel, so we have different apertures in the rear. We have an AR style post, aluminum housing. Really appreciate that these come with a set of decent backups actually, so really nice there. And then when we get back to the rear, as opposed to more of a pistol function, we actually have more of a rifle. So as opposed to the old paddle designs, magazine releases and all that, we now have AR style controls. Magazine release on both sides looks a little bit different, functions the same. I just talked about the bolt release forward of the trigger guard right behind the magazine. Comes with two 20 round magazines. They're backwards compatible only with the Evo 3S1, I believe. So uh, there is that. Your magazines aren't going to be as prevalent as the MMP because every MMP double stack magazine, you know, it's going to be compatible. So right there, the FPC edges it out a little bit. 
uh, but there's still a lot more to talk about here, of course. And then we have our safety selector, which is ambidextrous as well. It's kind of, it, it is redesigned for this, but it doesn't make a huge difference. It still digs a little bit, but it's not too bad. One thing I appreciate though, is that it is much easier to transition from something like an AR to something like this. So your battery of arms isn't gonna be that much different, at least in the lower receiver here. Now, of course, with the side charging handle, that changes things up a little bit, but I'm a huge fan of side charging handles from your Chris Vector to your SP5 to the SCAR. I just really like that design. It's very intuitive. I never really, you know, with the way they've redesigned this whole area, by the way, my uh, video I just dropped on this gun, I talked more about what they actually did to change this, but you know, from right here, if I need to do a magazine swap, you know, take the old mag out, boom, drop it down. You know, if I need to work my charging handle, it's right there. I just love the battery of arms of this thing. They made it pretty much perfect. Now, one thing I'll say about AR style guns, the Copperhead, the MCX I have behind me, and, you know, just your regular ARs is... And a lot of people like this design. I have nothing against it, but when you have your charging handle up here, you know, you kind of kind of have to break away a little bit. It just gets in the way. I just, I don't know. Me personally, all I'm saying is I like the battery of arms on this gun a lot better than I do on the FPC. We have the newly redesigned grip here. So not only is it just more ergonomic than the old one, but it's also adjustable. So we have one screw right here. We undo that and we can move it back or forward uh, in order to uh, get a better reach on the trigger. Now, one thing I'll say is Smith & Wesson wins in the trigger department. This one isn't terrible, but it ain't that great either. It's just a standard trigger. I mean, it really, Nothing special about it. The flat face on the FPC is better in my opinion. Now, we can fold this to 16 and 3 8 of an inch, but we also have a foldable stock on the Scorpion. So we can get this down to 24 inches, so it's still a relatively compact package. One thing I like, they have a little bit of a rubber pad back here in the rear. By the way, I, I do like the fact you can put your magazines in the stock of the FPC, but this just feels better. It's a little bit smaller, a little bit more ergonomic, I feel, and I just like this area in here. It's not the best by any means, but it just feels better to me than that of the FPC. But another thing that I appreciate is the fact that they have an aluminum folding mechanism on this gun as opposed to plastic ones like again I'll say on the scar and the lockup is solid everything on this gun is solid you don't hear a rattle <laughs> it is tight and just awesome and so I really appreciate that Breakdown of both guns, very simple. Not gonna go too much into this, but you have a single pin on the Scorpion. <laughs> you move your bolt back to the rear and it just falls out, check that out. And, and that's it, right? And to remove our bolt, we reach in here, we push down, we pull the bolt out. The whole thing comes out. I'm just going to do that really quick. Just push that down, boom. Just that simple. Super easy to break it down, to clean it. Just make sure you don't get your finger pinched in there. Bring your bolt back, trigger pack, slide it back in there. Push your pen. It's that easy. And it is super intuitive. I really love, I, I love a lot of things about this gun. And, and we're about to take it to the range. I haven't even really got to the good part yet on this one. Really sleek 
design. By the way, I'm running the Amos Core Holosun on here. It's done a really nice job so far. By the way, if you have a beard, this area between the stock and this buffer tube, if you will, kind of tends to pull every once in a while. So be prepared to lose a couple of beard hairs uh, because of that stock. Now the breakdown on the FPC is a little more involved. It's not terrible, but you'll see in comparison that it is uh, definitely more than what the CZ is. So essentially we want to put downwards pressure on the stock. There's a spring that's on the inside of here. And once you put downwards pressure, you're going to want to pull this pin out and that will allow you to remove the stock. And then we have a pin in the back with this buffer tube assembly here. And you're going to want to put downwards pressure on that, pull the pin out, keep a hold of that spring because it will go flying. You can ask one of my friends how this went the first time he tried taking it apart. And it literally almost knocked the hat off of his head. So uh, it was, uh, was kind of funny once we realized he didn't lose an eye. And then we pull back on the charging handle. That's going to expose the back of the bolt. And that will allow us to release a pin underneath. So... And just line that up. That pin will come out. We don't want to lose that. And then the bolt comes out. What you'll notice with the bolt is you actually have a cutout in the back part of the bolt that actually has enough room where the hammer can ride on the inside of it and then strike the uh, back of the firing pin there. Lining this up is not a problem. That pin's going to help us do that. Now, if you take the charging handle off, you have to have the pin in there uh, to be able to do this because that little notch will actually keep the charging handle from going all the way back and that's what actually grabs the charging handle. So you gotta have that little pin. The uh, small side is going to be facing up and then sometimes you'll get this effect where it acts like it doesn't wanna clear the hammer, just a little bit more pressure and it will do that. You could even you know, use gravity to help it drop past the hammer. So if you notice that, it's not, a, it's not a real big deal. We take our spring and our pin and that's gonna go on the back of the bolt and there is a hole where we can then put this pin through and it's gonna sit flush on both sides, just like that. And then we can put our stock back on, pull this out, and then it locks down in place. So yeah, it is definitely more involved, but it's not like it's a terribly difficult process compared to the Scorpion though. A few more steps and pieces to go along with it. But it is interesting, when you look at the uh, extractor, when you look at the hammer, uh, compared with the FPC to the Scorpion, the parts on the Scorpion are much beefier and just, they look more solid. Now, that's not to say that there's anything wrong with the FPC at all, but it just appears more solid. Now, one thing you don't want to do is when the bolt is out, you don't want to accidentally pull the trigger. It's uh, just turn your safety on. Because then in that case, you got to fold it, maybe get a longer punch to be able to reset the hammer. If you can't do that for whatever reason, then you got to take the folding mechanism apart. This top cover comes off. You got six screws here, two screws here. It becomes a little more involved if that happens to you. And so it definitely happened to me. And uh, it's something you definitely want to prevent just by turning that safety on and don't pull the trigger when the bolt is out of the gun. And this brings us to the exciting part. And there's things that you don't see, or I don't see when I do a gun review by itself until I get a similar gun side by side. It's the same way with motorcycles. When I'm doing my motorcycle reviews on my other channel, I'll do an individual bike review and there may be things I point out when I ride a similar bike. Same situation here. And so while neither one of them have an exorbitant amount of felt recoil or muzzle rise, they are wildly different. So on the FPC, what I notice is you get more of a jagged response to the gun. 
Now you're going to feel some of that mass from both of them, but you definitely feel more of the mass in the Scorpion. So this one feels a little less, um, a little less felt recoil, but the response in the muzzle rise is a little more jagged, but it is pretty much straight up. You just kind of get this jagged effect, right? And I really narrowed that down to the fact that it's so light in this forend. That's probably why I got that response. And I held both of them very similar. I didn't, I don't, I definitely didn't do a thumb over bore on this gun and not do it on that one. I just shot them both just like you see right here. Um, so a little less weight up here led to that response. The Scorpion, I got this vertical and to the right but it was less jagged, smoother uh, muzzle rise. And so while there was a little more felt recoil in the Scorpion, the rise and getting back on target was a little bit easier with that gun. But that can be resolved. Again, maybe doing a thumb over bore type of grip. If you add a light or something like this, or even if you were to add a suppressor, that will then balance this thing out and you probably won't get that response, but it is something I wanted to point out. Another thing is the accuracy. We were at 20 or 25 yards max, and both these guns did a fantastic job. They are super accurate, and I love that, man. I love putting shots, boom, 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 boom. It's just, you know, I mean, it's exciting, right? And it's, uh, it's, it's really satisfying. I didn't have issues with either guns, which is most important, and they are both super accurate. As far as the battery of arms, I've kind of already touched on it. I prefer the Scorpion. It's easier to use, more intuitive, and that's just my opinion there. I didn't even use the bolt release up here. I just always use the charging handle to obviously charge and then just release that bolt when I put in a fresh mag. So that's how they shoot. What about overall value and versatility? This is gonna give you more value right here. Not only in the price, MSRP is like $6.59 on the FPC, $9.99 on the Scorpion. They're both fairly well priced, but again, this one is going to fit a lot more people's budget and it's an American made company. And while I don't prefer the battery of arms on this gun, it's one heck of a value, man, that you get in the FPC and the versatility, you know, this one edges out the Scorpion a little bit too, because I can fold this thing. You know, if I want to use this as a truck gun, let's say, I don't know if you'd want to use this as a truck gun, but you absolutely could. Uh, if I want to use this as a survival gun, backpack gun, this thing can fit so many different roles. If I want to even maybe take it to a competition, you could do that. If I want to teach somebody on this thing, you could do that. You can hand this off to anybody in your household and they feel comfortable protecting themselves. And that's what I focus on the most is as a defensive tool, would I trust this thing? And absolutely I would. And like I said, it just fits that survival role so well because I freed up three magazines, three magazines, all because they can be stored on this gun. One in the grip, two in the stock. So now I can carry even more magazines with me and use less real estate. For that reason, man, the FPC, if you want the most versatile PCC out there and one of the best made, American made, and one that I trust, there's no better one in my opinion right now as I'm making this video than the FPC. But that does not account for the cool factor because when it comes to the cool factor, the CZ Scorpion wins 100%. And we still have some versatility because we have a folding stock that works really well. And so I can deploy this. This is more comfortable to shoot. I like the ergonomics. I like the battery of arms better on this gun. So if you want to spend a little bit more money and you're not so much concerned with your mag compatibility, which is clearly better on the FPC, and your ability to store the CZ Scorpion is an excellent option. But which one would I go with? Well, it, assuming that budget is not in the conversation, I like the Scorpion better. I just like the function. I like the battery of arm, everything I've just talked about, right? I, I don't need to cover that again. I just like it more. And that's what it comes down to. I just like it more and that's it. 
Um, and so I believe I would go with the Scorpion, which I almost always pick Smith & Wesson guns when I do a comparison. But this thing, it, everything they've done with 3 Plus Carbine just makes this one of the best, if not the best, PCC out there. Maybe even the ultimate PCC. And so I just, I, everything about it. You know, I can adjust my stock if I want to. I can fold it. It's got backup sights. Yes, it's more expensive, but this thing is freaking incredible. So that's where I'm at with it, man. Both guns are really good. If you want to spend more money, I think you get more bang for your buck out of the CZ Scorpion. The FPC is no slouch though, man. The ultimate goal is to have both of them, right? And so that is, uh, that's a part of what we do here, man. And I love bringing these comparisons to you. And all of this is a big part, again, uh, to our patrons. And so if you like what we do and you want to continue to see what we do and expand upon that, consider joining us on Patreon or you can join us right here, man. As little as a dollar a year and 12 bucks a year, essentially. And I, on Patreon, I actually give it a little bit of a discount if you want to take advantage of that if you pay for the yearly. So get some cool perks along the way and help us grow right here, man. Big thanks to you guys. See you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.